Welcome to the barn. My name is Joanne Knight, and this barn buddy is about this little quilt right here called Bunny's Love Chocolate. It was appliqued in piece by Kent Lee, and it's one that I wanted to quilt for her. And I want to show you a little bit about the, the setup that I decided to do, the diamond that I decided to put in here, but how I manipulated that pattern. This is the quilt. This is what I am quilting on the inside. Each of these diamonds are going to go behind that applique, so it looks almost like wallpaper whenever it's done quilting. And you can see from the picture that I'm using a thread that is going to kind of blend with all of these different color backgrounds that are in here. So it just looks like texture. The first thing that I needed to do was to go and get my diamond. And I chose a diamond by Janice Bart. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. And it's this one right here. Move that into view for you. This diamond, I think, was actually intended to be a border on a quilt, and I thought it was a really good shape to be able to have this channel quilting in here and this little bit of texture in the middle. So I want to show you what I did with it. The first thing that I need to do is get rid of this line that goes through the center of it because I don't want that. The other thing that I need to do is size it to what I want it to be. And you can see that it is really small. So I said give me 4 inches by 8 inches and left freeze aspect on. And then to make it not quite so long and narrow, I just moved it up to where I thought it was pleasing for me to look at. And this is about the size that I ended up with. So I'm going to select this diamond, and I'm going to hit F7 on my keyboard, and I'm going to go right in here and start taking out all of these lines right here to be able to have this pattern not have the line that goes through the middle. I'm going to do my greater than and less than sign. I only have that one selected, so I'm going to hit delete. Do my greater than and less than sign. This one is still connected, so I need to do F7. Hit my D on my keyboard, greater than and less than. Hit Delete, greater than and less than. This one's still connected. Do F7. And let's divide it right in here. Let's do greater than and less than. And this is just a matter of which one I need to divide until I get the one that is just going to be the line. It's probably right in here somewhere. Hit delete on that. Greater than and less than. I still have it connected. So let's see where it's going to go. Probably in here again. That looks like that might have it. Hit delete on my keyboard. And now I'm in pretty good shape. I've got a little bit of open area right here, so let's hit Control Z because I did not choose wisely. I'm going to scroll in and scroll in, hit F7 on the keyboard, hit my D on my keyboard, scroll back out, greater than and less than, and hit Delete. And now you see I have a pattern that is a channel around it and these particular patterns right here. If I select the whole pattern and I hit F7, it's going to doing at me because those are individual patterns. When I export it to a CSQ, it will become one pattern and there will be a jump stitch going from each of these places. I don't want there to be a jump stitch between this little inside diamond and these pearls. It will be better if it quilts out in one continuous motion. And you notice where the start is. You see where that start is right there? When I scroll in, I see that this little pearl right here actually will connect at that point. So I'm going to divide it and I'm going to connect that 
but in order to make it easier, I'm going to select this and rubber stamp it because I want it to end up being the same size. This one is still individual. This one is rubber stamped, which combines it. F7, and you see where all these jump stitches are. I'm going to hit my D on my keyboard, and I'm going to delete that. And now I have this one pattern, which is the center of the diamond. Hit F7, and I am going to divide it right here. Hit my greater than and less than and divide it right here. Because the outside diamond only has one node at the top and one node at the bottom because straight lines only have two nodes, I've got to hit my D on my keyboard right here and get rid of that no-so line. Hit my D on my keyboard up here, and that leaves me one line. I'm going to convert that pattern to curve because I need a line in the middle. F7, and you see now I have all of these different nodes. I need a node in the middle, not a line in the middle. So I'm going to hit the D on my keyboard right here and hit the D on my keyboard. Let's see, let me take this one and I'm going to hit my F11. In snap is off. I'm going to move it out of the way. I want this particular one right here. So I'm going to take nodes, turn my E on on my keyboard, and in snap that to that point right there. When I move it back in, it is going to be back in line. Now I'm going to take this node and in snap it to that one. All I have to do now is turn my E off on my keyboard and move this one back in to where it falls in line. Hit escape. But before I do that, I want this pattern to start here. And instead of going here, I want to do order join and make it go all the way through this center. So let's see what happens. That's where I want it to start. I am going to hit order join. Everything turns pink, so that tells me that it is selected. And I am now going to manipulate this and move it back in line where it needs to be. Not with in snap on, but to where it just falls right in place and makes a nice, pretty curve again. In snap that. Let's see F7. Let's pull this down just a little bit. Hit escape. And now that pattern is all combined. You see where the start is, and the reason that the start is there is because I did order join. I want to select this pattern, and I want to combine it. And if I hit F2, you will see that it's going to go up, it's going to go inside, it's going to make the loops on the inside. And this thing is little, so it's going to be so much easier to quilt it this way instead of having four stops and starts, I'm going to pick this pattern up and I'm going to put it right here in this center to replace the other one. I want it to be a good match. Do greater than and less than. And when I do greater than and less than, you see I've still got this in pieces. So I'm going to click until I get that one out of the way. Just scrolling through. That probably will be the last one. Let's see. Nope, I got that one right there. See, I need all of these pieces out of the way before I ever go to my export. But I also need it to start back at this one. So if I say order join now, it still does this one, then this one, then this one. So let's do F8. Give me this is number zero, this is number one, and this is number two. Right click to commit it. 
and now I can take this pattern and export it as a CSQ and that's what I did when I called it bunny diamond right here and now I have the pattern that I need to be able to do my setup so that's a little bit of how I manipulated that pattern to be able to quilt this quilt and this is what a little bit of the quilting looks like I'm down at this row right here so I only have about two and a half more rows to do and in another barn buddy I'll show you how I did fill and trim and which works better to be able to quilt this quilt out thank you